How to Argue with a Cat. Chapter 6. Argue Logically. The Deductive Mousetrap. Get a Cat to Come. Of course, you can never make a cat come. It comes when it wants to. Dog lovers often point this out. They think cats are self-centered and egotistical. This attitude gets cats all wrong. Being reasonable creatures, cats need a reason. They come when it's an obviously good idea. One excellent reason is food. Call a cat during mealtime and she will trot right over. She may run to the kitchen even when you call her before mealtime. See, told you cats come, just not always the way you wish they would. A comfortable scratch is another reason to come. Most cats like to be scratched and having an excellent vocabulary will come when you offer a scratch. A favorite toy, also a good reason. Catnip, duh. Lap, also obvious. Now, if you fail to come up with a good reason, a cat will reasonably ask, why should I? To a dog lover, this question may sound rude. Dogs are creatures of the mine is not to reason why point of view. But if you listen closely to a cat during the day, you will realize that he often asks you to come. Yet, how often do you obey? A wise cat, and most cats are very wise, will not resent you when you fail to do so. He understands that he needs to offer a better reason. So he changes his tone, calling more loudly and insistently until the reason to come is to stop the yowling. Or he looks at you with giant Bambi eyes and just opens his mouth. Most humans obey the silent meow instantly. They're kind of stupid that way. Humans don't always come when a human calls either. Boyfriend, come over. Girlfriend, now? Boyfriend, yeah. Girlfriend, why? Boyfriend, do you need a reason? Girlfriend, yeah. This is where persuasion comes in. Not only to get a person or a cat to come, but to get them to do what you want in general. A reason does not have to be a bribe or even a fact. The logical jab and cross. Okay, now we have to use a term that may be unfamiliar to you. Unlike cats, many humans tend to shy away from strange words. The most important building block in persuasive logic is Wait for it, the enthymeme. It's a great word to pronounce if you want to intimidate someone, a human, I mean. Big words don't intimidate cats. An enthymeme is a one-two logical punch, like boxing's jab and cross. You just need two pieces. One, the proof, call it the reason if you like. Two, the conclusion, proof. I smell tuna salad on the kitchen counter. Conclusion, I should jump up onto the counter. As you can see, cats are very good at enthymemes. Humans, not so much. First human, I don't want to go to the Renaissance Fair. Second human, why not? First human, I just don't, that's why not. This is not an enthymeme. In an enthymeme, every conclusion needs a reason. A reason can't be the conclusion itself. I don't want to go because I don't want to go chases its own tail, like a dog. Let's try again. First human, I don't want to go to the Renaissance Fair. Second human, why not? First human, I heard there will be Morris dancers. Excellent and the meme. The proof, the threat of bands of annoying dancers with bells and sticks, supports the conclusion that the Renaissance Fair is a bad idea. As you can see, either part of the enthymeme can go first, the proof or the conclusion. I heard there will be Morris dancers, so I don't want to go. I don't want to go because there may be Morris dancers. Cats know this already. Bootlaces are fun, therefore they're a toy. Bootlaces are toys because they're fun especially when a human is trying to tie them. You just can't beat excellent logic like that. If you ever get
get confused about what an enthymeme does, just think of why a cat comes. It reaches a conclusion to come if you give her a good reason. In persuasion, a conclusion usually involves a choice. I think I'll come. Or an action. Coming. Got it? Then you're ahead of most people, including politicians. And speaking of politicians, the enthymeme is the single best way to tell if someone is talking nonsense or trying to manipula manipulate you. Let's see how, by looking more closely at reasons, the proof part of an enthymeme. It's a great way of spotting BS and, if you're the devious type, manipulating other people. A fact is what your audience thinks is a fact. A reason often starts with a fact. The sun comes up at the same time this morning as it did yesterday morning. Therefore, the cat knows you should get up exactly at that time, despite what the clock says. The sunrise is a fact. One plus one equals two. Another fact. Add one new cat to a single cat household and you get a pair of spitting cats. As a human, you know that one cat plus one cat equals two cats. But even a solid fact can get a different spin depending on the audience. If you're not a morning person and lack a cat, the sunrise may be just a theory. To your original cat, one cat plus one cat equals one cat too many. Every, every fact can get a different interpretation. One audience may think that tuna flavored stool softener makes a delicious dessert. Another may find this disgusting. When it comes to persuasion, what your audience believes can be more important than the facts themselves. If your audience doesn't believe that liver paste is good for it, then that fact will fail to persuade it. Your audience may believe that eating a turkey that outweighs it is a good idea. The fact that eating the turkey will make your audience sick won't be convincing. Naturally, we're talking about humans. People wish that arguments were all about facts and logic, but useful arguments have to do with choices, such as whether or not to come. A choice is not a fact, and the main elements affecting a choice usually have to do with what the audience believes or expects. If the audience believes that coming will end up in a good meal or a luxurious scratch, then it will be persuaded. Therefore, not all proofs or reasons have to start with facts. If a cat or a human believes something to be true, she will be persuaded just as if that belief were a real fact. If a person believes that a house is haunted, she will refuse to buy the house, whether ghosts exist or not. A cat will chase an alluring red laser dot in the perfect belief that the dot is a fast-moving, glowing bug a bug that a human controls with a small stick. Perfectly reasonable, more reasonable than a belief in ghosts, if not exactly true. So if you can get a cat or a human to believe something, or if you start with something they already believe, then you can use that fact, that belief as if it's a fact. A moving red dot is a bug, therefore it should be hunted. Beliefs come from two sources experience and expectation. Your average cat has had extensive and enjoyable experiences with bugs. He expects anything that acts like a bug to be equally fun. On the opposite end of the fun spectrum, a cat who jumps onto a hot wood stove will have a bad experience. From now on, he will steer a wide berth around hot wood stoves. But as Mark Twain observed, he will also avoid jumping on cold wood stoves. That's because he expects every wood stove to be hot. His previous experience tells him that wood stoves are hot. This leads to the expectation that future wood stoves will be equally hot, and so he believes that wood stoves make very bad places to jump onto. Better safe than sorry. Cats can form a strong belief with just one experience. They're quick learners. Give a cat a new treat, and if she likes it, she will expect that treat for the rest of her life. The experience leads to expectation, which leads to the belief that the treat is a good thing. Cats are wise enough to understand that no good thing should come to an end. People are much slower learners. They often need two or three disasters to get them to believe anything. 
Elected officials are even worse. They require decades of disasters. If you want to persuade someone, it's fine to marshal good facts, but the persuasion part comes when you speak to what your audience believes. Suppose you're a manager of an office and the people higher up in the company have asked you to increase productivity. You could gather everyone together and project slides showing how much more productive the other divisions are. Or you could put up cool looking graphs that perfectly illustrate how much more work would get done if everyone came to work half an hour earlier. Would the slides persuade your colleagues to put in the extra time or effort? Not in any office we've worked in. Instead, you want to listen first. Try to pick up what people in the office already believe. You hear that they feel overworked and underappreciated. They feel powerless. So instead of relying exclusively on facts and statistics, you work from your coworkers' beliefs. You. We've been given a challenge by the C-suite. How are we going to increase productivity? I'm going to need your best ideas. Let's come back in a week. Tell me what we can be doing better. And if we succeed, I'll make sure the C-suite hears about it. And I'll fight for rewarding your effort. Now, Maybe your office mates are not so overworked, and you happen to have been a great listener all along. In rhetoric, these truths do not matter. People know what they believe, just as cats know what they believe. And while their beliefs may be wrong for persuasion purposes, they're perfectly logical. Cats can be just as stupid as humans when it comes to facts. Anyone who has ever used a laser pointer with a cat knows that his grip on reality can be a little shaky. Cats are also very good at ignoring facts that don't agree with them. You. No, I'm not going to give you another treat. You're getting fat. Cat. Meaningful silence. Habits make things real. A cat can turn a good thing into a habit, so long as the human cooperates. And a habit is as good as the truth. This may be hard for a human to understand, so it's worth repeating. A habit is as good as the truth. This is not as complicated as it sounds. The sun comes up every day. From the sun's point of view, that's a habit. Based on our experience of every other sunrise, we can expect the sun to come up tomorrow and the next day and the next. Our experience leads to that ex expectation. That's belief. It's also a fallacy called the fallacy of antecedent. While the sun seems fairly reliable so long as we avoid blowing up the earth, it's a fallacy to believe that you should drive fast because you've never had an accident. When you or an audience or a cat believe something to be true from the standpoint of persuasion, it's as good as the truth. So in the art of rhetoric, the sun's habit of getting up every morning is a true thing. As you know, cats are very good at habits, and as predators, they are experts at observing the habits of other species, including mice, birds, and humans. You can observe a lot by just watching, said Yogi Berra. He was a cat in a past life. And the habits of others become truths. If you rise at the same time every morning, your alarm is as true as the sun, from the cat's point of view. On the other hand, not getting up at the regular time is a kind of lie to a cat. That's why the switch from daylight saving to standard time when we get up an hour later can upset a sensitive cat. Which is another piece of wisdom we should take from cats. Steady habits are a set of truths. They make up who we are. Straying from a good habit, practiced long enough, should seem like a lie. That's because a belief comes from experience and expectation. In cats, experience and expectation are the same thing. This is very wise. If you ever want to persuade yourself to eat properly, think like a cat. Don't try to motivate yourself. Instead, try to gain a habit. If you tend to skip breakfast only to wolf down a Danish mid-morning, make yourself a smoothie, pack it with the things you don't like, and probably would not eat when fully awake. Like spinach and chia seeds and unflavored yogurt, force it down every day until it becomes a habit. If you ever skip that smoothie in the future, it will seem somehow morally wrong. Now you know how a cat thinks. What's a habit but a long, serial experience? A habit builds the expectation that you'll do the same thing over again. And an expectation in the world of persuasion is the same as the truth. 
Of course, a cat is happy to let you give her an unexpected treat. Steady habits are good, but you should not get neurotic about them. In fact, go ahead and turn that sudden treat into a regular habit. She won't mind at all. What does all this have to do with getting a cat to come when you call? Everything. In order for the cat to come, she has to believe that coming is a good thing, a kind of truth. If coming isn't a good thing, then it isn't true, for cats know that all good things are true. And by good things, I mean from the cat's point of view, not yours. Cat wisdom. Never eat a ladybug. When dazzled by beauty or eloquence, remember, if it's as cute as a bug, it probably tastes like one.